Good morning, everyone. Eagle X from ATX Eagle X Gaming here today, and I have our market watch for the 20th. BTA is like this weekend BTA pre release, and there's lots of cool stuff going on in the game, and I have announcements for the channel also. First things first, if you guys haven't seen in the description in the comments, I have the link to the Discord server. If you haven't yet, go ahead and join the server, agree to our rules. When you agree to the rules, you will become a Digi Tamer. And you'll see cool things that we're talking about in the community. And lately I have our Limitless Discord, or our Limitless link up for the tournament. Registration is going to be open soon, a few times. Let's go ahead and get started with the Market Watch. First things first, I always covered sealed product. Let's talk about how singles are looking, how products are looking overall. You can gauge where high dollar singles are based off of the booster box prices normally. It's so like... We know 1.0 is like the expensive box, it's the oldest one. But we can already say EX2 is up for pre-order, guys, and we all remember EX1, EX1 down here, like 48 bucks. EX2 has a lot more desirable stuff in it, but it's not $95 desirable, guys. Unless they short print it, which I don't see happening anytime soon. That's gonna be a bit high. But also, a uh, notable part here, you guys realize the one-year uh, V-Muns are worth more than the EX-1 box? It's actually kind of crazy to think about. You can pull them in double diamond booster boxes as like your box topper pack. And all the other box topper packs are at least 5 bucks, Which is honestly really good value to guarantee at least. And then obviously you pull the Terramon, Upamon, and Jewelmon V-Mon, you get more than $5. So like your better pulls. But that's sealed product. Also... We all know that the Ultimate Cup promos are in circulation. And kind of like what I was telling you guys, I expected Demi V to be pretty comparable to Coromon. And as you can see, it's actually cheaper right now because everyone's trying to sell right now. This is a card, and like the entire Vmon line is in the season where it is most playable. Contrasting to like the Agumon line, he wasn't like playable the time he came out. Like, yeah, the rookie's good. I guess the egg was all right, but you weren't playing these cards. But, like, this is the jamming Vmon you want to play now. This is the Demi V egg you want to play now. Same with the Pyildramon, same with the X Vmon, the Omnimon. But, like, this is the set I expect to hold some more value for its initial release, but I do expect it to settle pretty similar. Like, I think we can see the jamming Vs go down to 120, but I expect it to settle at, like, roughly 100-ish. It is more playable than the Agu, so we will see a small price premium for that. Um, anyways, nothing else I really want to talk about here. They're just something to be aware of. And kind of talking about things coming out. We have promos. Tamer Evolution Box 2. If you guys haven't seen, this is something you could have pre-ordered in the Premium Bandai website. It's like the first box, except it has all tarts of cards that have already been out see any of them on here, but I know there's like a lot of red stuff in there for like the Gilmon line, if I recall correctly. But uh, promos I do want to pay attention to. The Wear Guru promos. We've, I've talked about them and I, I listen to you guys in the comments section. But the Wear Guru promos, it's something you see playing like BT9 with X Antibody. This is a stable four of in every build. Same with the Guru. It's not as easy to pull up when you have just promos, but like these are starting to go up pretty quickly. But anyways, we're going to talk about some of our current format, BT8. So we've seen pre-sales briefly, and I don't touch up these a whole lot because these are before prices really settle. But some things I do think are things to keep in mind. Uh, stuff was out of stock. It got relisted from the few stores that can pre-sale. And like 90% of the time, you'll see cards dip from their pre-sale prices. And that's because product is more available. This is a very limited supply that people can pull from. So you'll have to pay a bit more if you want it, like up hand, up front now. But we can see like a lot of prices are dipping from what they were. The cards that I definitely keep a lookout for though, is the Rapid Mons, because that's gonna be played in Yellow Hybrid. And I'll actually talk about that here in a bit. The armor alt arts, because they look nice and they go in armor decks. The Fannymon, and your Magnamon. 
Now, obviously, prices I don't expect to hold this high. Realistically, I think it's going to be in like a $30 range for most alt arts. But we'll see here in the coming days. Now, the first thing I kind of want to point out again, I pointed this out before, but memory boost cards are amazing pickups right now. If you get the alt hearts, they have a lot of longevity in the game. Green memory boost for Grandis, Quagmon OTK. Black memory boost for X Antibody. Blue memory boost for your Garuvmon X Antibody. Yellow memory boost for your yellow hybrid Rapidmon decks. Purple memory boost for Mastamon. Like, they all have a niche application somewhere. Red memory boost for Black or Graymon, even. Like, like these stamped ones, this one's hyped up for BT9 or BT10 with the Dark Knight stuff. And Howling Memory Boost is seen as like time as like the memory boost. But like all these other alt art ones will have a time to shine still. They haven't yet. So first, let's cover the meta. So first deck I want to talk about is Armor Rush and Imperial. They run a lot of the same cores. It's like right here, we see this is like an armor rush with an imperial top in, and that's because well, armor recovery with an imperial top in. That's because it's very aggressive still. You don't run the fire rocket option, but you'll see V mons are a staple. The armors are part of the deck. Magnamon's part of it. Imperial Davis is a staple, and you can actually see that here in like this imperial list. Like we see Davis's, we see some armor stuff. The Pyildramon, V mons like. It's something that will be played. And this is a spicier list with a Mimi. I think it's interesting and it makes sense for the list. But Davis is just your consistency card. Davis Ken is your memory plus card. So we can look at like Vmons. These are cards that I would definitely be looking out for. If you haven't got them already, like the one year box stopper's already been bouncing up. Grand Prix Vmons not seeing as much play, so that makes sense for his price dip. But the two big ones being the Jamming and the Starter Deck Vmons, these two are the ones that will see a lot of play. Then X Vmon for some armor builds, some Imperial builds, they run the old X Vmon, but a lot of them prefer the classic collection X Vmon for the Jamming Inheritable. And then Imperials, we already know pre sales, they're going to be inflated in price. But you don't really touch any of the old Imperials. Like, if you touch any of them, it's probably going to be the EX one, just because it fills a more unique role than the old Imperial. The Secret one just rarely saw play to begin with. But that's what I would expect. So then our next deck we want to talk about is X Antibody. And a lot of the builds are pretty, like, linear. If it's an X Antibody card, you kind of throw it in the deck. The staple that I would look out for is Sinarizimon. He has been reprinted in the buy box promos, and his price has been dipping to a healthy point because of that, at least. But I think this is basically the bottom point. I don't see it being below $20 for that long, as this is a four of card in those decks. And then just a quick overview for the Altar X antibodies and regular X antibodies. But remember in Dorimon, was like 75 bucks. He's calmed and cooled down a little bit. He's 60-ish. Alphamon's 55-ish. The Doru Grays are starting to fall down a lot more, too. But, like, your secrets for this deck have been pretty stable, like, their entire lifetime. Alpha, at, like, 15 bucks, I think, was, like, his lowest. And that was, like, when his set first came out, because he wasn't really played. But now he is, and similar to the Omnimon X Antibody, this is, like, a BT9 card. So it's going to be going up slowly over time until his meta spot, like, really shows up. But that's for X antibody set. Next, I want to talk about yellow armor or yellow hybrid with armor in it. This is basically the control deck you'll see people play in this format. Security control is kind of there, but this is just more consistent. And Cody is one of those key cards to help with the extra memory to get Susano consistently. He has a way to control board with Rapid Mon more. And that's why Ophanis also ran too. It's a two color card, which procs Cody. But Yellow Memory Boost, that's a card that you can use to pull up your cards and pieces consistently. So, just real quickly, got the Yellow Tamers, you run TKs, you run Cody's, you don't run Kari in these builds. You run TK Kari, you run Zoe. And those are the common ones you'll run. You might see a build run a TK Takaishi from the starter deck. 
but he's a bit slow for what our format is now. Patamons, that's a four of card that you must have if you want to play these decks. It makes your Rapid Mon cost three instead of four, so it keeps turn, assuming you don't have a Cody out. But you'll also see this rare Patamon C play, reveal top four, add all yellow tamers you find. It's a really solid card, guys. So if you don't have either of these Patamons, I'd be scooping them up this week if this is a deck you want to play. Then Holy Flame. Someone in the comments mentioned last week, like, Holy Flame's a solid card. You gotta keep it in mind. And this was one of my favorite cards in the hybrid format. It was used to deny lethal for a lot of builds, because they don't have ways to get extra checks normally. And you'll see, like, it's a card, uh, not in this build, but it could be used in builds like this one. It stops Imperial from getting all their swings with damage, because it'll give them minus one security check for the rest of the turn. It's their entire board. And then Susanos, these guys are at their bottoms right now. $15, I think, is the lowest I've seen these. You can probably scoop them up at locals for 10 bucks. honestly. If you throw a $10 bill in someone's face, they'll more than likely take it at this point. But if you don't have them, great time to pick them up for those yellow decks. Next, I want to emphasize Black War Raymond. This is a deck a lot of people are hyped about. And you'll see lots of cool ways to build it. You got red base, you got black base. It's in the promo coming up again, because an extra check on a rookie spot is super powerful. But you'll just see, like, staples we have. Agumons, got your high dollar ones, but the main ones you'll see is the promo Agumon, the BT5 Agumon, which is the alt art here. And then if you run the black build, or typically either build, you'll run this Agumon also. Uh, I think those are the main ones you'll see, though. And then for Greymons, you'll see a toolbox of them. You'll see the gain of memory. If you have an Agumon, your source, you'll see Security Attack plus one Greymon, which we don't have the reprint in Star Deck 11, which is annoying, but BT10 is looking better with all the alt hearts, in my opinion. Or if you want to play Max Rarity, then you want to pick up your event pack two ones in the sometime near future. Then Black War Greymons. Obviously, you run four of the new Black War Grey, but people are kind of torn. Do you want to run the promo Black War Grey? Do you want to run the secret Black War Grey? Or do you just want to run a regular War Grey? And honestly, guys, I think the best ones to run is probably the security option negating one. I think that's a super strong one. Or the, the dash pack promo one are probably the two I would lean towards if I were to build the deck. And then Omnimon, he's a staple, guys. Extra check. After you pass memory, super strong way to finish the game. This card will see play in the future still in the X Antibody decks, and his price will go up as BT5 is harder to find now. Then we're going over to the BT9 format. BT9, we've talked about Grandis Quagmon before, and a lot of people in the comments see you guys were like, hey, we need to look at the Grand Quagmon promos and the Palbon promos. And yeah, they're definitely four ups in this deck in the future. These builds are almost the exact same. There's not much to differentiate from these builds. Four memory boosts so you can consistently find pieces. And then four of each piece because you need four of each piece to play the deck. Except this one actually doesn't run the Jamming Palmon. They run the Pulse Mod, it looks like, instead. So spend all your opponent's Digimon. But regardless, you guys asked for it. Here's the Jamming Palmon. Still roughly 10 of pop. I think it's a solid pickup. And the Grand is or Grand Kuagamons, they're roughly 5 to 6 a pop if you include shipping. Yeah, it looks like 5-ish is pretty fair to pay. And the last deck I really want to bring up to attention is BL Star Control. This deck has been making a comeback because the Ice Wall, or not Ice Wall, but Kikaya's Breath is a great answer to these OTK tall stack decks, along with removal options. And you have lots of value with Calling from Darkness in this deck as well to get your BL Stars back and their cheap Drachmon's a way to loop that also. And you'll see in this build, BR, BL Star, you run Kakaida's Breath. Howling Crusher seems to be a card that's fading out of these builds, but nonetheless it is a potential option still. You see BL Stars are coming close to the $20 range, which it's been going up. It's just because it's a playable secret people are excited to play again. 
And then Howling Crushers, we've seen these cool off, and someone actually mentioned uh, last week, like, hey, check out, over in Europe, these are, like, nothing. You're like, yeah, they aren't. This is, like, a dollar. This is, like, 30 uh, pounds, or 0.3 pounds. Like, they're, they're pennies compared to what we have over in the U.S. So if you really want to get these for cheap, cheap, you can look at some other sites that aren't TCG player to scoop them up. And then the last card to point out, Kakaia's Breath Hit to get balled out. This is a card that is a high count use in those decks. So something to be aware of. They're only made in the starter deck and the Nationals champion packs and the Team Revolution boxes. So you won't really see these break into circulation again. What we have is what we have unless they decide to do another reprint. So just keep an eye out on this card. I think $10 is probably fair at this point for what you can expect, as that's where a lot of people are pricing them at. So to wrap up the video, I have a giveaway from last week. I asked everyone last week, what were some uh, events you were excited to sign up for? I got a lot of cool responses from you guys. So let's go ahead, grab the comments, and select a winner. So our winner is, yet again, <laughs> William Burroughs. Congrats on winning the giveaway, bud. Message me on Discord. I'll send you a pack again in the mail. You're looking forward to joining IRL events. You don't have a computer, so online events aren't really an option. And you're not the only one in that same boat. I know a lot of people have been looking at doing more IRL events, and Bandai has been great at accommodating that. That being said, guys, take care, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe.